Welcome back to my channel and today's topic is again around the 286. So I really like the 286, it is the missing link between the 8088 and the 386. I dug out an old repairing project I started in the past and recently I got all needed spare parts to finish this project. I have here a 286 board made by Elite Group, the ELT286B-1000. It is a 10 MHz board and has a chipset made by Chips and Technology, so this chipset was very common on 286s back in the days. Long time ago I started already to restore that board. It got a nice cleaning, a new CMOS battery, yeah, and, but unfortunately it turned out that the CPU socket was broken, so I had to desolder it and I was waiting to find a proper spare part. The socket which was soldered there was for ceramic LCC CPUs. Uh, these are those uh, flat CPUs made of ceramic with these gold pins underneath. The CPU sits here on this socket uh, on the contacts and need to get pressed down by this metal heatsink. But we can see here uh, that one of the latches of the heatsink is broken and it was not pressing enough onto the CPU to get a proper contact. So uh, therefore it was not working nicely at all. At that time I could not find a spare part so I was putting the board by side. Then suddenly, in a sleepless night, I got the great idea. I want to build up the world's most beautiful 286 board with as much as possible gold and ceramic chips on it. And believe me, the outcome is going to be very nice today. 286 boards uh, with PGA sockets uh, for PGA ceramic CPUs are very rare and I found out that the pin out uh, of the LCC socket and the PGA CPU is fully compatible and would fit perfectly instead. And chip collectors are very concerned about the look of the CPU on the board and well, ceramic ones looks just great. Of course I could put also there a socket for a plastic CPU as well with the same functionality but no, CPU Galaxy won't do that. <laughs> On the first step I will solder here the PGA socket, which I pulled out of a defective 386 board. This socket was used for 387 coprocessors, which has the same package as the PGA286. I will use hot air uh, to put the socket into the board, to clean all those holes. Um, here is stressing the via connections a lot and by heating up the whole area it is easy to get the socket in. Afterwards I will resolder all the pins by hand. Well, this turned out to work not so bad. The new socket is in and we got now a rare 286 board with a ceramic PGA socket. Also the soldering side looks not so bad after cleaning. But now it's time to choose the right CPU for this pretty board. It would not be the CPU Galaxy Channel if I won't have something special here to put. Usually we have those ceramic PGA286 CPUs we all should know. It has the number A8286-10. The A stands for Ceramic PGA Package and the 10 for 10 MHz. So this is a common end-user CPU, but I have something much better to put here. We have this one. Ta-da! It has a white printing with the part number MG80C286-10. So, this is really cool and MG means military grade. So this is a 286 CPU at the highest quality produced and of course very rare and hard to get. They were used in military applications as well for aircrafts or other highly precise reliable machines. So this is definitely something special we can put into this mainboard now to bring it one step closer to the most beautiful 286 boards. 
Before we go on with some beauty upgrades, let's check if this CPU is working and if the board is posting. I also want to be sure that my soldering work is also fine. So I just put uh, the power cables, a speaker and the video card to see if the board is working and Yes, so we get a post screen, very nice. Our military grade CPU is nicely working and we can go on with some beauty upgrades on this board. So the next socket we will put the focus on is this 40 pin socket, which is supposed to get a floating point unit into it. There are plenty different 287 versions available as this one from Intel in dark brown ceramic. Hmm. No, not so nice. Or this 287 from AMD in that beautiful plastic package in black. Ah, also not really. We need something much more beautiful and rarer. Here I have a new inbox advanced math coprocessor from IIT. Look how cute. This has a little window in the box to get a first look at the beautiful purple ceramic chip with gold lid. It, actu it is actually a 2C87-12, it has a clock of up to 12 MHz and fits perfectly into our 10 MHz setup here. So then let's open the box to see what we got here. Ah, this feeling when you open up something new, old stock. So what do we have here? Here we got some paperwork, ah, and also some software, advanced mass coprocessor startup disk. Run and type IIT. So this we will definitely check later on. Business reply mail, warranty service. We don't need that anymore, I guess. And here's some nice installation manual. So what do we get here? All the usual stuff. Take care that your PC is unplugged, of course. So nice, here we have also the different versions for the 386 as well as for the 286 and the different socket types. A uh, very interesting manual. So what else do we get here? Using the IIT startup disk. Once you are presented with the menu, select the diagnostic routine. This test will exercise all of the commands that a math coprocessor typically handles. So very nice. We got here some testing software. Looking forward to test this also later on. And all the usual stuff here. Lifetime warranty. Interesting. So IIT. Integrated Information Technology. I didn't know that what IIT was standing for. Interesting. So then here we have the chip. Wow, look at that. Completely new in this still shining new box here. And this nice purple ceramic with this gold lid. So a pretty nice part for our beautiful 286 board here. Wow, look at that. First time removing it, completely new. So nice. Then let's put this nice chip into the socket. So, wow, this looks already so pretty with this beautiful military graded CPU and this rare floating point unit. So I'm already quite happy. Our board looks already very pretty and special. There is not much left we could easily change to something more beautiful. But over here we have 36 chips sitting in a socket. Those are the RAM chips and actually from Texas Instruments. 256 kilobit DRAM. So I was wondering if I could get those in ceramic and best case with a gold top. Well, this thought was disturbing me for a long time a lot and yeah, it was not easy to get this amount of DRAM in ceramic. But here we have it. Look at that. Ah, I was able to score 40 pieces of new old stock 256 kilobit DRAM in purple ceramic with gold lid on the top. Ah, how pretty is that? These ones are made by Mitsubishi, the M5M256S-15. Actually, this is a 150 nanosecond chip, but with one weight state at 10 MHz, this should work flawlessly. Actually, those 40 
chips were not cheap, but I wanted to pimp this board so bad that I took this bitter pill and well, now I'm glad that I bought them to be able to create the most beautiful 286 board. Ah, so nice. Yeah. With my self-made tool, I'm going to remove now the plastic ram to give my new golden beauties a new home. Oh, and look at that piece of beauty here. Ah, oh, this turned out to become very, very beautiful. Those 36 gold bars in purple ceramic, this nice IIT coprocessor and this rare military graded CPU on the board. Ah, oh, so nice. This is going to be for sure my all-time favorite 286 board in future. Yeah, I know we are not talking here about performance or so, but I'm pretty sure there are other collectors out there who can understand my passion of beautiness on boards as well. Basically, I don't care here so much if I have 10, 12 or 16 megahertz, zero or one weight state at the run timings. Of course, it would impact the performance, but to be honest, a 286 is anyhow slow and games of that era will run perfectly also on this setup. Well, for this video we put enough gold and ceramic onto this board, but I have still some more possibilities to pimp this board in future. If I would be able to find two pieces of 256 kilobit EPROMs in purple or white ceramic, I could change the BIOS chips as well. Second possibility uh, would be to change the keyboard microcontroller. It is usually a 8041 and they are existing in ceramic as well, but I don't have a device where I can copy the ROM content of this one to another one. Also, the Motorola real-time clock, the MC1468-18, is existing in purple ceramic with gold lid, but also very, very hard to find. But now, let's go on with testing this wonderful board. For the video card, I will take something special here as well, an ATI Mach 8 Vantage, or also called Wonder 800 Plus video card. This is a very early ATI card with 1 MB of memory. This nice card was 599 US dollar back in 1991 and is an excellent Windows 2D accelerator card. DOS performance of this card is great as well and an excellent choice for a fast ISA VGA card. Then we need a drive interface as well. I will take here the Adaptec AHA1542C SCSI controller. It has a floppy interface as well and with its own BIOS this card gives us also the possibility to use SCSI drives with much higher capacities uh, than you can use here on this with the stock BIOS here on the mainboard and IDE drives. We also don't need to mess around with uh, drive settings. Um, everything is basically automatically set here from the BIOS of the SCSI controller. So a very nice and reliable piece we can add here to this 286 setup. Also the hard disk drive will be something very nice today. I will take this 520 megabyte drive made by Fujitsu in 1992. So this is a full high 3.5 inch drive and looks very nice in its white color painting and is a really massive build and very heavy. It is a very reliable drive and I already pre-installed everything we need for testing now our 286 here. Also the IIT software utilities I put here on the drive um, that we can check our uh, coprocessor later on. By the way, uh, this software I will put a link in the description below. You can download it if you're interested to get it also. Then we need a simple I.O. card, which gives us a serial and a parallel interface to be able to connect a mouse or some other devices as well. And last but not least, we need also a sound card to enjoy our games. My choice today is here the Creative Sound Blaster Pro 2, the CT1600. It is a very nice audio card, which has already a Yamaha OPL 
3 chip on it and a CD-ROM interface as well. These are dot plug and play cards and you need to set the port address interrupt and DMA manually on the PCB. By the way, those old creative sound cards are also very collectible meanwhile and sellers are asking crazy prices on eBay for those. 100 US dollar would already be a good find, mostly they are offered between 120 and 200 US dollar. But now let's put all these together and see if everything is working proper. Then let's switch it on and let's see if we get a post screen here. Then let's check first the BIOS here. It's a really basic award BIOS, not many fan fancy options we can set here, just the usual stuff as two floppies, two hard disk drives, date time and a speed select. Uh, of course we can also toggle a color mode, but that's it at the end. So then let's boot into those right now. The BIOS is checking nicely everything here and also our 1 MB of RAM is detected, so that's good. Here the Adaptec BIOS is also showing up and it is recognizing our Fujitsu drive as C drive. The board boots right away into those without any issues. And yeah, the first program I usually take to ensure a proper working board is check it. It allows us to perform a lot of hardware tests. On the start it is doing already some basic tests and we can see here it's recognizing also our IIT coprocessor. First let's do a checking of the system board. CPU, floating point unit, DMA and interrupt controller are checked here. And also all those tests we passed here nicely. So then the most important part I want to ensure that our golden RAM here is working properly. For that we can perform a memory test. I'm going to choose not the quick test, instead the intensive one. This takes some time but gives you the confidence that all chips are working properly. I speeded up the video here, but in real it took about 25 minutes and we can see all our RAM checking we passed also nicely. Last but not least let's do a CPU benchmark. For integer calculation we got here 1889 dry stones and the IIT FPU shows up with 456 kilo wet stones. Next one let's check the tool which was delivered with our IIT coprocessor. So 286 CPU with IIT 2C87. Mass coprocessor pest confidence test. Okay. So what options do we have here? F1 rerun confidence test, no this we don't need. F2 floating point benchmarks, F3 4x4 demonstration, and this is interesting. Let's start with F2 and the floating point benchmark. The following benchmark measures the performance improvement provided by your mass coprocessor. All right. Okay. It is performing here some different mathematic functions and comparing the time it took to calculate it with and without the floating point unit. Interesting. Arithmetic calculations, wow. Here we can see nicely what benefits a floating point unit brings if the software is taking advantage of it. With floating point unit 0.44 seconds without 5.28 seconds, so this is really a huge difference. I assume that this software is also usable for other manufacturers of floating point units. Look at that. General 1.2 seconds with the floating point unit and 26.14 seconds without. Wow, this is really cool and a nice tool to show these differences. These results indicate an overall speed increase of approximately 20 times when using the math coprocessor. Wow, very, very cool. So, 
F3 4x4 demonstration. What is that? The following benchmark demonstrates the unique 4x4 matrix transformation function that is built in every IIT Advanced coprocessor. Interesting, it seems that the IIT has some additional functions which an Intel uh, 8087, for instance, don't have. Yeah, wow, cool. Three dimensional graphic rotation using this IIT function. Look at that, how fancy this looks like. Nice. And here, the same graphics using the floating point unit without this IIT function. It's obviously not that fluently anymore. <laughs> and here, without the floating point unit. Ridiculous slow hour animation. This is really a nice demonstration made by IIT and of course it is supposed to show these differences dramatically here. But if it would be that visible in real applications, ay ay ay, I have my doubts there. Then let's see what results we can get at Landmark here. It is showing us our 10 MHz and an equivalent of 11 MHz to an AT computer and a coprocessor with 13 MHz rating. For a 10 MHz setup with one wait state on the RAM timings, these are already good results. Also our ATI video card brings here 5228 characters per milliseconds, which is also a good result. I remember back in the days when I had my 286, I could also show already nicely images which were typically in PCX format or bitmaps. Yeah, 35 years ago, this was already something special to see a real image on your computer. Windows 3.11 is also running flawlessly on a 286 with 1 MB of RAM. Of course, you can't expect any supercomputer experience. And also having two programs in parallel working was not able on a 286 and there was at least a 386 needed. But hell man, this was so cool back in the days to have Windows running, a graphical user interface and all these nice icons. Yeah, it was really indeed a step into the future. Do you also remember those cool screensavers we had back in the days? Yeah, small things like that were fancy. I remember when I found out that I could untick the setting delete screen and the screensaver started to remove the pixels on the desktop. <laughs> were you also one of those sitting an hour in front of the monitor waiting until the last pixel disappeared? <laughs> I did it. Well, good old memories at the end. Let's review also some games which you can play nicely on a 286 machine. Lemmings. Oh my gosh, how addicted I have been to this game. Sitting nights in front of the screen, saving the lives of those small cute lemmings. And with Sound Blaster support, this game is still funny to play with. And I guess you were also one of those who were trying to blast all sweet lemmings away with the bomb function. <laughs> yeah, for sure, I did it. Aquanoid was also one of my favorites. Some sort of old Pong game, but here you needed to remove the blocks until you can enter the next level. A nice game uh, with mouse support and of course highly addictive. Next one, a nice jump and run, which has a sound blaster support as well. Prehistoric 2. With its cool sound effects and nice graphics, it gave you a lot of fun and it's, it's somehow comparable with Super Mario at the end. The game Bricks showed off with some nice graphics as well. A nice game with different levels and difficulties where you needed to pair same boxes together until all of them disappeared. And one game which should not get missed on a 286, Monkey Island from LucasArt. Sound Blaster support, nice graphics and an interesting game story makes it to a must for retro gamers. And for sure, the title music brings a lot of memories back for those of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s.
Last but not least, Commander Keen, also a nice jump and run with Sound Blaster support, which you can enjoy nicely on a 286 as well. Well, I loved this project and my new treasure I got here. For me the most beautiful 286 board with a rare military CPU and all is working flawlessly. I hope you liked the video and you know already all the stuff with subscribing and thumbs up or so if you like the content. You can also follow CPU Galaxy on Twitter if you want to see more things in between I don't show here on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.